Bellingham scored on his debut for Real Madrid in a 2-0 win against Athletic Bilbao. But Barcelona struggled uh, against, uh, of course, Hetafe. Both teams having a man sent off. And Barcelona had their coach Xavi himself also sent off in a nil-nil draw. We play back the weekend's action for you. But there is plenty of action in the transfer market as well. Chelsea finally got their man, Moses Caicedo. They unveiled him. We will show you the unveiling video and tell you what exactly he fixes in that Chelsea midfield. But there's more drama because now we are being told Romeo Lavia has also rejected Liverpool, just like Moses Caicedo. And instead, he wants to go to Chelsea. What is going on at Anfield? Okay, Neymar is off to Saudi Arabia. Uh, when we came here the last time to show you Mbappe's figures, you thought we were crazy. We'll show you <laughs> Neymar's figures, and they are absolutely mind-boggling. All of that to come here in the next 60 minutes. The show is live and interactive on social media. Uh, do send us a message, okay? Use the hashtag SportsZone on Twitter. I retweet your messages. I read them, share them with the rest of our viewers from across the globe. Also, if you prefer WhatsApp, the number is 551 uh, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. That's the WhatsApp number. Your thoughts on all of the weekend's action. Uh, welcome here on the show. Uh, show proudly brought to you by Hantes and Sente Stank. My name is Fento. So I hear Fento. When we come back from this very short break, I'll introduce my guest. And we have plenty of highlights to show you. Welcome back. This is Sports Zone on Joy Prime. I'm your host, Fentio Tahiru Fentio. Make sure to get in touch with us. Use the hashtag SportsZone on Twitter. Uh, if you prefer WhatsApp, the number is on your screen. 0551-575757. We've got a lot to talk about on the show today, so we're not going to waste a lot of time. I'm joined tonight, as usual, by my two favorite guys, Daniel Kranting and Tichu Fe Philip Achrin. How are you guys? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Give me fist bump. <laughs> what is your problem? You always have a problem at the beginning of the show, and I don't, I don't get that. I have a serious problem today. With, it's with, a with. very serious problem. With, what's causing you see, so much problem? You see, in life, eh, sometimes yes. we want to be lied to. We don't want to see the truth early. Yes. You lie to me. That's who me small. Okay. You like to deceive yourself small. Do you deceive me? Then in October, I reveal your true colors. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Well, you're not happy with my 37 issue. more games <laughs> uh, you have to endure. So don't this, worry. It's don't just worry. one game out of many. This evening, this evening, uh, this evening, I've got, I've got big shouts to give Mrs. Crancy. <laughs> 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 Mrs. Crancy, don't worry. Our team is back. <laughs> yes. So our team is back. Just one last, over the weekend oh, yes. or something? She, I'm, th I'm sure she's... The one. You see, you don't get it. You, you don't get it. Because she had a certain frustration with Rudiger every day. And when Rudiger left, there was something, nothing was happening. Now we've got some small work called Levi Cowell. The left side there uh, was oh, solid, quick. Settle that thing. No get problem again. Fantastic. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, Ruby Lavia is rejecting Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> before I say anything, you see, it's funny when Chelsea are uh, in a transfer for a player, then you can't be putting yourself there. Then you be because you don't work alone. It's like an old man. Uh -huh. hmm? Tell me, Chelsea is like an old man with uh, Liverpool. Yeah? Yes. it's like an old man yes. with money. Yes, who wants to move to a beautiful young girl who is committed to the love of her life? Thank you. You understand? Thank you. Whatever you do, she you says want you. to. That's the truth. You, you, you want to interject, hmm? and you know they are. Liverpool fans. Liverpool are taking their slogan, we never walk alone, literally. That's so right. where somebody is chasing their transfer, you come and, you come and insert yourself there. And they are bouncing. Please, please, please. We would like to walk alone. Go away. That's wrong. <laughs> we walk alone. Oh. <laughs> Romeo Lavia is rejecting Liverpool. We'll, we'll get to Liverpool it's very soon. Uh, but let me tell you, of course, about Syntex uh, Tank. Syntex uh, Tank have introduced... Uh, this, Tanks with lots of lots of different layers for you. They were actually the first uh, uh, tank manufacturing company to introduce uh, double layers. Okay, uh, and now you can have as many layers as you want. So that's what it is. All right. So get yourself a synthetic tank, and if you like, uh, they give you a guarantee of up to even seven years. 
And um, you have to always remember, uh, no matter what your water needs are, always remember that Sentence Tank is your solution. Thank you so much, Sentence Tank, for being with us here, okay? The layers that I've talked about, double layer, multiple layer, different colors, whatever your water needs are, make sure to talk to Sentence Tank. A strong, a tough uh, Sentence Tank, okay? They have over 300 agents nationwide. And uh, if, of course, you want to order a Syntex tank, just call them 0244-335-168, 0244-335-168, and of course, they will have you covered, all right? Also, the show is brought to you by Hunters, and I keep telling you about Hunters, they've introduced the red apple cider, so the next time you get into the market, make sure to look for uh, Syntex. Uh, sorry, uh, Hunter's <laughs> Red Apple Cider. Try it. Uh, and uh, whether, whatever your refreshment is, uh, whether with a group of people or you're alone or on a hot day or on a cool evening like the Ghana winter month that we are experiencing now, make sure your refreshment of choice, of course, is uh, Hunter's. And I say <coughs> Ghana winter month because for the past three years, we have not seen the sun. Sorry. And it's cold every day. Nobody's using their... Nobody's using uh, fans anymore. Anyway, guys, this is what we're going to do. All right. Ben I, play for me this video. All right, cool. Uh, I, the, ben I, you have ruined my intro now. We prepared that thing. I, I don't know. You are coming what's from it, where? It, play I that thing. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. You prepare the song. I was introducing the song. You play the song for me. And you are. You are, you are messing that he's sitting on my happiness. A shock. I don't like that. Cool down for him, my brother. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, I can sing it for you if you want. Please, Daniel, go on. All we want is Kaisedo. All we want is Kaisedo. All we want is Kaisedo. Kaisedo. All we want is Kaisedo. All we want is Kaisedo. All we want is Kaisedo. Moises Kaisedo. Simple. Simple. Chelsea have finally got there, man. We'll talk about uh, that game. But obviously, it happened before the match itself. Um, the drama, and uh, in case you've been hiding under a rock, I gotta tell you, it was a lot of drama, very much fit for a soap opera of Mexican proportions. Okay, Chelsea had chased this player all summer, only for Liverpool to come in there and, of course, try to gazump the deal and had it. And that's the unveiling, and Chelsea did really well. That's Caicedo with his mother, um, and the picture came from. 2020, three years ago. So they recreated the picture. So this is a new one. And then it goes to the old picture. There you go. And this picture was taken in 2020 when Chelsea still had three in front of their shirt. And he was in, uh, he was in Uruguay at the time, he and his mother, <coughs> when he took that picture. He's always been a Chelsea fan. His father is a Chelsea fan. And despite Liverpool having a deal agreed for his signature, um, well, the player said he's not going to go to Liverpool. Uh, he's two to his word. Apparently, he agreed to deal with Chelsea since May of last year, uh, of this year, I beg your pardon. And he wasn't going to go back on his word. And he's always wanted Chelsea. And, um, of course, Chelsea had to, to, to step up on their side of the back game, and they did. And eventually, now they got their man, they overveiled him. And he granted an interview where he said he watched the game from a hotel and he was very impressed. And he says it looks like a team that he will thrive in very, very much. OK, so that's what it is. All right. Uh, it added a lot of flavor to the game itself before the match. And Liverpool started the brighter of the two teams. Um, and so, uh, let, let's talk about that as well. And the match itself. Um, all of that drama contributed to potentially a feisty affair. And the game was, it was literally like that. Ding dong. With no particular team really dominant. Liverpool perhaps in the first half. Chelsea much better after that. But just all of that, you know, and you watched the game yesterday. It just showed why both teams needed Kaiser, didn't it? Absolutely. You looked at the game and you were thinking, 
Kaiser solves Liverpool's problems on the day. Yeah. You flip it on the other side, and you're thinking that Kaiser also solves Chelsea's problems on the day. The more reason why the two clubs were very much interested in getting him. And the prize money is that the, the transfer money that these clubs were mentioned were huge, right? Because Chelsea didn't think there was a second club coming in for Kaiser until Liverpool realized that they didn't yeah. get the DM, and so they have to find a way of paying it. 111 million they offered. In the end, Chelsea have him for 115 with some other conditions. But the point is simple. There aren't many players like Caicedo in the market as a stance. If you're a big team and you play, you want to play at a very elite level. There aren't many DMs available on the market. And, and yeah. that, is, that could be because Caicedo is that good or generally there aren't many players good enough <laughs> in that position. And, and, and the two of them can also be true. Yeah. And the more reason why a lot of teams were looking at Caicedo, buy money came through to just have a look around and see if there was a chance. Then there was Liverpool and there was Chelsea. So you can understand why Brighton were holding on to getting the best price out of him. But on the game, on the day in itself, I thought it was a proper game of two halves. Or even, even for Chelsea, in Chelsea's perspective, it was a game of more than a half. Because when Chelsea got the equaliser, the game flipped. Yeah. And Chelsea, from that point, looked like the better side. And I think when, in that first half, we saw Alexander Arnold <clears throat> inverting a lot, getting into the midfield a lot. So Liverpool more or less had about four bodies in there, including Koji Gakko, who was deployed in midfield alongside McAllister, Sabo's line, and Trent, so four. Meanwhile, Chelsea had two, basically, because Chukwe Mika wasn't necessarily doing a midfield yeah. job. But one thing that Pochettino did great was to push, you know, uh, Ben Chua very high up the pitch into the space where Trent was vacating. Once that happened, Trent had to go back to be a right back. Okay. And so he freed up one extra man in midfield. And so Liverpool then couldn't have the four in the midfield. <coughs> then Chelsea went to play a midfield diamond with Enzo being free to play at the tip of it. Conor Gallagher had a wonderful game at the base. Generally, I think two managers did some very good things. But ultimately, the game lacked quality in the final third on both sides. I mean, what the game, we like the intensity, we like how they play, we saw the abilities of these players on the pitch, but in, 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 in most parts of the game, it lacked some bit of quality in the final thing. Yeah. Either the final pass or the final run or that little decision-making wasn't there. And so in the end, I think the one-all scoreline is a reflection of the game. Liverpool could have sealed the game in that first half and Chelsea very much could have gone on to win it in the second half. So I think it was fair. Um, Daniel, I mean... Um you know, I think one of the biggest things that was uh, trending on social media mm -hmm. after this, the, 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 um, the starting lineups came out was yeah. everybody was looking at that Chelsea lineup and asking themselves, is this a squad that looks like a 600 million pound squad? Um, and on the, the, on, and on, the, on the basis of the names that were on that team sheet, you'd be asking yourself the same questions. The performance itself would have encouraged them, wouldn't it? <clears throat> yeah, the, the performance was encouraging. But again, I feel it was two teams with potential who are not there yet, yeah. who were playing on the day. So I feel if, if Liverpool were at their best, I don't think Chelsea fans would have been too impressed with the performance because they would have been battered and flipped too. If Chelsea were also at their best, I don't think Liverpool fans would have been um, too happy about the performance. So for me... It wasn't. I'm not. I'm not going to read too much into the performance and 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 praise either team. But what I saw was was something very significant. And at the start of it, I'll go back to Chelsea's transfer business over the past, let me say, six months. So in January, when Chelsea got rid of of Jorginho, if you remember, I was against that particular transfer because they didn't have anybody or they didn't have enough cover in that position. And then they brought in Enzo Fernandez. And Enzo Fernandez was deemed to come and replace Jorginho in, in, in that position. And yeah. we saw him play that deep line, defensive midfielder type of role in the second half of last season. But that is not his game. That is not where he best functions. And this Caicedo transfer just proves that I was right back then. Yeah. So what that Jorginho transfer has done is to gift Arsenal three of the best in the, the, that position mm -hmm. to this one team, Arsenal. And I, every, the other rivals are, are scrambling to to try and get a player in that mode. And that is where we've reached the modern day football. That defensive midfielder type, that particular type of defensive midfielder is, is what is in demand. The defensive midfielder is good, that is very good in terms of defensive awareness. And then can also kick start attack, can dictate game, is very uh, comfortable with the ball. Yeah. The likes of uh, the Busquets, the, the Rodri's, in that mode, the Jorginho's, that type of player. And for me, Caicedo is, Caicedo is a level above that. Why? Because yeah. he can do very different things. 
So Kaisiro can play that Jorginho role. Kaisiro can play a box-to-box -box role and function. Mm. Kaisiro, if you if you even send it easily, he just defending hard. Just defending hard. He can do or every, every, so every, every uh, type of Michael role. Essen kind of player. Yes. He can play a right back too. Yes, but in modern day football, I think he, he's a better fit than the Michael. I think he's a different type of everybody, yeah. and he does it at least to an eighty percent of all of them. And that is what he gives Chelsea. And for me, once Chelsea have got this guy's little deal done, I think we are going to start seeing the best, the best out of Enzo Fernandez. Now, what we saw in yesterday's game, if you were a Chelsea fan or a football fan and you were watching, anybody would have predicted that Enzo would have sat in that base and Gallagher would be led yeah, yeah, yeah. But Pochettino knows that that is not Enzo's best position. And Enzo is better off being offensive and being allowed to express himself um, offensively. You can't have a player like that playing in that deep role and not have enough cover. Yes, he can play that role. But when he was playing that role, the few times he played that role when he was at Benfica, he had enough defensive cover around him, enough bodies who were moving around and doing the dirty work for him. It's similar to what Pogba does with France. When he sits deep, yes, mm -hmm. he's that stylish player who dictates play. But he has a Kante, he had a Matuidi who go around and, and, and do that dirty work for him. So that is the sort of environment that Chelsea needed to create for Enzo if they wanted him to play that position. Yeah. But now they have Caicedo, you have that defensive cover, you have somebody who's comfortable picking the ball and transitioning to Enzo who can also do the damage. And the other thing transfer. is that has surprised many people is, is that in the midst of all of the Enzo Fernandez chaos, Chelsea pulled out of a deal for Tal. Tyler Adams. Yeah. yeah. And then only today we are discovering that Chelsea did that because they had their eyes set on uh, Romeo, Romeo Lavia, Lavia yeah. from Sarantin, mm -hmm. the Belgian international. And the question I guess everybody's asking is if he comes where does he play? Are you playing all three together? You can. Yeah. It's, it, it's possible. Pochettino is a very, a very versatile coach. Okay. I think he looked at the team that he had, the, the players that he had. <laughs> yesterday and decided to go with the system he played. It doesn't mean that is, what, that is how he's going to play throughout his time at Chelsea. And you can imagine if you have Enzo, Lavia, and then Caicedo. These are three very different but good midfielders that could very much combine if, if telepathy is formed, formed quickly. Also, there's nothing wrong having Lavia in the team to fight for a position because you can't account for injuries. No, no, no coach prepares for injuries. So you need that. I've already said Chelsea about three midfielders. So I'm happy with the signing of Lavia. I'm happy they've got Caicedo and they've got Enzo Fernandez as well. There are, are going to be games where you'll be very comfortable to go with three across the midfield, three up front. And there'll be games that you'll play like you played the last time. And in fact, you can play, you can play Enzo Fernandez in the Chukwe Mecca role that you played yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And nothing hurts you. You have Lavia, you have Caicedo. So I just think Chelsea's midfield, all of a sudden, from nowhere, they've got some of the best players in that position. And if they click... And that is down to the manager now. And we saw the signs yesterday. If they click, that's going to be immense. If Gallagher stays as well, that is an extra body. He can do several things in that midfield. He can be a box-to-box. -box. He showed yesterday he could be a DM. <laughs> he, sh he showed that he could be a number 10. Yeah. I'm not sure if he leaves or he stays. But if he, if he stays, that's an extra body. I just think Chelsea are beginning to find the pieces. Even though it's not a finished work yet. Right, cool. They are on their way. And, and, and just, to quickly, just to quickly add to what Situ said. Again, I wanted to move on to Liverpool. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll try and tie it into that. But... When you, are, when you are analyzing players moving into teams, the reason why, yes, a player might be good, but it's not every... The fact that Mount is a good player doesn't mean he'll be good at Man U. Sure. The fact that Enzo is a good player doesn't mean he'll be good at Chelsea. But when you take into consideration the manager that they are coming under, Poch is a very meticulous person. If you mm. watch him under Tottenham Hotspur, he has the patience, he has the time to teach the players yeah. what exactly yeah. to do. Every yeah. So if you look at him. what Gallagher did yesterday, yeah, that's pure coaching. if Lampard had put him in that position, he wouldn't have thrived. True. If Potter had put him in that position, he wouldn't have thrived. But everything Gallagher did yesterday was, was calculated. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. could see, he wasn't Gallagher taking decisions. after the game yeah. that the coach gave them a lot of tactical instructions. instructions. Yeah, yeah. So he was playing according to instructions. Yeah. He wasn't left to use his mind to try and think about what to do. Yeah. And that is how good Pochettino is. So and we saw the signs from Chukwebeke and even mm -hmm. Sterling, who wasn't necessarily wide all the time. I yeah. can't come into midfield to form that cage of the a box. The question is, there is Klopp, there's also Liverpool. So the, the attractions should still be there. Why are players sending them down? <laughs> I, I, I just think it's terrible business by Liverpool. Mm -hmm. It's just terrible. It's, it's almost arrogant, right? Because what Liverpool didn't want to do was to show the whole world that they were in desperate need of players. And that's what they did. But the first thing is... Liverpool didn't prepare to lose Fabinho and Henderson. So I'm sure it's uh, Sabosly and, 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 and McAllister coming in. 
I'm sure Klopp would have been fine because Akantara is on his way back. The youngster, Bezer Schick, is also on his way back from injury. So they would have been fine. But only two, three weeks ago, Liverpool are losing their captain and their defensive midfielder in Fabinho. So all of a sudden, he had to act quickly. But he didn't want to look desperate. So it's almost as if we'll pay 45 for Romeo Lavia, take it or leave it. Very laser, fair approach. Almost as if they are not, they are not, because they know that if they go on and go and show themselves as desperate, clubs are going to be demanding a lot of money. But the problem then is, having shown 111 million to Brighton and told the whole world you've got that amount of money to spend, every team is going to demand somewhere around that region or a lot of money more than they would have demanded for their players. So Romeo Lavia is going to Chelsea for what, 50 million? Liverpool had bid for 45. Now we understand Liverpool sent in an elite <coughs> bid for 70 million. That is desperation. The very thing they were avoiding, it's caught up with them. So I just think they were not ready to lose Fabinho. They didn't prepare to lose Fabinho and Henderson. But once they lost them to the money from Saudi, it became a problem and they've not been able to fix their market. Um, we got to say, though, the reason, for example, that uh, <coughs> even Romeo Lavia is apparently rejecting Liverpool, his number one preference was Liverpool. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and so I don't think... Uh, had made it clear that it would take 50 million to sign him. And Liverpool were bidding 45 million, 46 million, 47 million, and never reaching 50 million. And yet, when the opportunity arose for them to sign Caicedo, they swooped in and bid, what, 111 million pounds. So Absolutely. the reports are that Ruby Lavia, uh, Romeo Lavia felt very, very embarrassed and, and quite frustrated and angry as a result of that. Um, because he didn't feel respected. And yeah. the reports are that even, uh, what do you call it? Even uh, uh, his parents were actually looking for a house already in, a, at, in a, Liverpool in, in because they had yeah. given them the assurance that no matter what, they were going to sign him. And now after what they did with uh, Moses Caicedo, and still couldn't find 50 million, but could find <laughs> 111 million. Suddenly, Romeo Lavia thought, these guys don't value me enough. And that's probably the reason He's kind of rejected them. <laughs> Maybe now they should go for Tyler Adams, which Chelsea yeah. declined to sign because yeah. they the were getting deal. Yeah, so they could Rubio go for Tyler Adams. Because there's no match right. Anyway, yeah. let's move on. Arsenal will be title contenders this season. Um, they played against Nottingham Forest. Uh, 11.30 kickoff on Saturday. Arsenal looked to be cruising um, very early on. Got some two brilliant goals. Wonderful assists from Martinelli for Eddie Nketiah's opener. And then Shaka. Uh, scored an absolute world-class goal to give him a 2-0 lead. Then, uh, when he scored on his birthday, the day that he, his wife gave birth to a baby boy as well, uh, and then suddenly he set up a very nervy <coughs> finish. But in the end, Arsenal wrapped up the three points. And Daniel, you, you know, you, you've been talking about Arsenal an awful lot. Um, they got the three points. They had to work hard for that. Yeah, they had to work hard for that because of their attitude in the second half. Are not putting down to um, some lack of quality, or so. it, it was, you could just tell there was a drop in, 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 in attitude. They were a bit too um, laid back in that second half. Too comfortable, and, and too comfortable, and, and that's what cost them. But trust me, they showed me the reason why they will challenge for the title. They showed me the reason why I feel they will win the title this season. They are. I predict, you predict Arsenal going to win. Yeah, I predict Arsenal. No, you predict Arsenal to win. Yeah. What I saw in that first half, or let me see the first 60 minutes, was tactical genius. For me, they, they control the game. You see, Arteta showed us in that first 60 minutes why exactly he went for Timber, Havertz, and Declan Rice. The ability to play together and how each of them and their individual attributes caused the system to work so well. Arsenal literally won the ball back within about five or six seconds after they lost it. They had so much control. Nottingham Forest couldn't breathe in that first 60 minutes. It was when their attitude dropped and then um, Nottingham Forest took initiative and, and, and went on to win. But look, this Arsenal team is absolutely brilliant. And for me, it's the options and the flexibility, what we could see. In fact, after the 60th minute, when Nottingham Forest got the goal back, we saw a, a tactical switch. And again, I'll mention it again. Last season, yeah. Ateta couldn't look on his bench and bring on that level of quality. He brings on Trossard, and Trossard just completely changes the, 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 the face of the game. He brings off, of course, uh, Tomiyasu had to come off an injured Timber, and that is even class, because Tomiyasu would have been starting last season at a right back. Now Timber is injured, Tomiyasu comes in. He had the luxury of bringing Gabriel, who was a conk starter the entire last season. And all these things are quality. And this, for me, it's, it's, it's just two parts of the game. Very comfortable. When you are in trouble, you can bring on somebody from the bench just to come and stabilize things. And they saw the game through. For me, 
this this is a team to beat. Honestly, this yeah. this Arsenal team is a team to beat. And, and, and I, I, also, I also like the, like we said last season, I thought I would have had no choice than to play <coughs> the same eleven that will play against City, yeah. Yeah. against Liverpool, against Man United. I'm not sure he picks this team to play against City, mm -hmm. but because it's at Emirates and it's against Nottingham for a really greater yeah. respect to them, he, yeah. he can afford to play part of where he played him. Because he knows that they are going to see a lot of the ball, and once that happens, it's going to be in the midfield. So you can see Arsenal pushing a lot of bodies forward in that manner. You could see Tim Basswell that when he played, it was very yeah. good as well. And and Kai Havertz, he didn't have a great game. He but, did, but <laughs> Kai Havertz had a great. We're game. not going to have that debate. I, I, I think he had a good game. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say he no, had a great no, no, no. game. I don't think he had a great game. Some Daniel of the positions he had, me, he had a fun. Some of the positions he, did he was picking, he did it. Was very impressive, but it wasn't a great game. He didn't have a great game. But the point is, he's got. A player like Edin Ketia now could play. he's always a very good striker, a very good fit. I think he's he's actually one of the best finishers in the Arsenal side, if not the best. I actually think he finishes chances off better than Gabriel Jesus, but his stocks are not as high. So yeah, I thought that has got a very good pool of players. And the point is Arsenal are going to be less predictable this season than they were last season. Okay. Because last season, like I said, they're gonna you knew the starting level, you knew how they were gonna approach the game, but nobody knew that Gabriel wasn't gonna start. Nobody knew Pato was gonna start as right back and invert as he did. You know, nobody knew that was the midfield he was going to pick. Yeah. But it's Emirates, it's Nottingham Forest, he can afford to do that. And now you can't predict what Ateta will throw at you. You judge a player per the system. That's the thing. In, in more than a but he wasn't brilliant in the system. No, he was, he was decent. Look, he was absolutely brilliant in the system. Yesterday, in fact, on Saturday. What exactly did he do? What did he do? Let yeah. me show you what he did. I'm listening. Per the Wait system, me. per that box system, okay? When you are playing two, and I'm comparing it to last season, okay. when they were playing those two tens or two eights, what uh, Jaka used to do and come in. Yeah. In the offensive positions, first of all, Jaka doesn't have the, the special awareness of uh, habits. Mm. He, doesn't habits has awareness. he doesn't interpret the space as well as habits. Harvest <laughs> movement was literally just creating opportunities and spaces for us now. That is a chance. That is it. So that, that is was a, it. How no, many chances a, did he create? Hold on. Very intelligent How player. many chances no, it's about did he create scenarios. with his movement? No, it's about scenarios. You see, that's the point. You put another... You, put we, you don't buy a player for no. 65 million for you? scenarios. Who told you? There's a scenario who told you? I'm not going to say scenarios. it was, no, was what? excellent. Who told you? Scenarios don't buy a means what? That. Why didn't I take a... You see, why didn't it's, I take it's a just English. Why scenarios I means what? Why didn't I take a... You are sitting there in your house. You are telling me the guy's wrong. I'm sitting there. Yet, Ateta is keeping him on. Why? We've not had players who shared that have played 19 minutes. Oh. They play, they play 19 minutes because the manager doesn't have a choice. But the manager has best time for playing We've players look who at the bench. Look at the bench that Arsenal had. Why didn't Ateta take it? No, but Ateta has to justify why he broke That's his habits. That's the point. It's not that no. simple. And he was justified. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying... Look, right. I thought you had a no, different no, game. So, so, your so movement, wait, Ivan's was excellent. Your, he was superb right, and he'll cool. keep let, playing. Let, no, let's move on. And he'll keep playing. Uh, no. <laughs> you can complain, but he'll uh, play. No, no problem. Don't worry. Oh, we'll move it on. Uh, Manchester City. Very routine victory for them. Uh, of course, uh, they started up on Friday night against Burnley. It was Vincent Company coming to his uh, to face his former team, Manchester City, of course. But it was baptism of fire. Welcome to the Premier League. Uh, Kai, <laughs> look at that. The first goal took what nine minutes with his first touch of the ball. It's a magnet. That isn't it? It's because crazy. It's, it's just that was right place at that the right time. That was Haaland's first touch yeah. of the ball. At the start of the game, and bam, he scored. Uh, and then, of course, <coughs> Burnley kind of tried and tried a little bit, created a few opportunities of their own. There, uh, no threat at all at the goalkeeper. And then another opportunity comes in, and look at the way Man City worked the ball. It's absolutely brilliant. Look at that one touch. He doesn't need to touch the ball multiple times. And, you know, he got another brace, two goals. Pep apparently wasn't happy with that. Uh, later on, he was involved in a bit of an argument with, uh, with Haaland. After the game, he kind of explained what was going on there. Um, but it wasn't such a big deal. And Rodri tried here. It didn't go in, but it did go in eventually. And Manchester City wrapped up a 3 0 victory. Um, Sichu, Pep said his team are still... So that's the third goal, so 3 0. Pep said his team are still far from their best. And he's right, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> this was as comfortable as he gets. No, when you've got a player like Erling Haaland, he scores from half chances from nothing, and that is what we saw. The first goal was just, I mean, lots of strikers are not going to be, be as sharp as he was to get to the ball first on the drop from the header from Rodri. Yeah. And the second goal, he just had to just set himself in. His body movement while he took the shots was special. You, you, you can easily sky that. 
but he, he aligned himself in a way that he just can't keep the efforts and a bit of control. And even that, he struck the underside of the of the of the of the crossbar. Yeah. So when you've got a special player like Erling Haaland, you can be have a very average day and still win games. But Pep was right. I, I didn't think City were vintage. But City have got a character of not starting seasons well. Because normally they end seasons very well, play a lot of games. And like we saw, this, this, this preseason was very short. Yeah. They played only three trial games, played the community, the, the community showed. And, and here they are starting the season. So it was always going to be that slow start for Man City. But we know they will hit their levels. We know they will hit their gears. Burnley had some decent opportunities against the a better side, maybe City, uh, City were going to be punished. But like as Pep said, he knows his team wasn't vintage and he's going to work on that. Interesting. Um, Spurs also got a two-old draw. And Jordan, are you assisted the winner for Crystal Palace when they beat Sheffield United by one goal to nail? There you go. You like you are surprised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Man United's game just concluded. They won by a goal to nail. Um, Rafa Varane scored the winner. Daniel, briefly on that. You were watching that. You were not impressed at all. Monsa, Monsa. Oh, Monsa. It's just one game. Daniel, forget. So, you see, so we are no, back see, to the same issue you were talking about. No, see, How long did Mesima last in the game? No, you see, you like see. 68 minutes or so. There you go. So, the manager played him for 68 minutes. He was he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> Who is on the bench? That's the difference. The manager had asked no, but, but, has but the manager has to justify why he, he it was, it was no, he, I, I, I get this, that. this game just proves exactly okay. what I said when my United went on to get Onana. When you go and get Onana, you are suggesting to us that you want to keep possession of the ball. Yeah. That's why you bring a goalkeeper who is tidy in possession, a goalkeeper who can retain possession. That's why you bring a centre-back like Martinez who is comfortable in the ball, who can retain possession. Sure, is good as that. It's, it's, it's good at that. Then you go and bring Mason Mount. You have Casemiro and you have Bruno. And in that sense, look, my United literally struggled to progress the ball from the defense into yeah. midfield. It was no awful. receivers. Why you didn't have a midfield? So I watched part of the game. It was careless in, in possession. Yeah. And this is exactly what it is. You see, when you have players like Mason Mount and Bruno, I'm not saying they are not good. But when you, but they you don't need, complement you each need other. a conductor, yeah. Yeah. when you are keeping the ball and you are doing it well, and you have players like Bruno and Mason Mount, they will help you win back possession, high intensity, and then keep it again. You look at Liverpool, what they have with. Um, Sobotla and, and, and Gapo and, and, yeah. and McAllister. That is what, that's the idea. If Fabinho was around, he's the one sitting, he's the one conducting. They win it back yeah. quickly for them. You look at what Manchester City, you look at the off-the-ball movement of De Bruyne and Gundogan last season for Rodri. That is the idea. But if you go and bring a ball-playing goalkeeper in Onana, and you are basically doing what you were doing last season, you it's just want him, work. or you just want him All to right. pass nicely. That's what you want. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, interesting. Uh, we Charlie, will take a... took the ball. He fell. He was yeah. ten years. He fell yeah. on the. Oh, sixty-eight asa. minutes. Hey. You see, when it comes to Mount, there sixty-eight minutes. Mount and Asa. But when it comes to the ball, the ball was on the line. The ball was on the line. He just had to touch the thing. He fell down. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Harvest was also failing anyhow, but he came here to see, defend him. See, let's, move was failing. let's move it's on. It's the Lord that will take a hand for you to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we'll take a short break. Towards the end of the don't worry. Um, towards the end of the show, we'll show you how. In fact, my producer asked me to show you now. So he asked all three of us to show our predictions for the season. Um, this was before the Joy Sports one. Daniel chose us now as champions. Top goal scorer, he says, Haaland. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> thank this guy you. Is a eh? But now, are you confused? Shall I have to change the third one? Yeah. The spirit of darkness has touched him with injury. <laughs> I have to change it. I Best new sign, and Timber is already injured, and that's the problem. Top goal scorer, he says, Haaland. Surprise club, barely. Emerging star, Ganacho of Man United. What about Sicho? Or is it mine that's coming up? Um, okay, cool. Champion, Newcastle, at least I'm consistent. Tom Scorer, Haaland, best new signing, Harvey Barnes. All right, I think that's, that's because I think he's going to spend Newcastle onto the title. Surprise club, Villa, they didn't start well at all. But yeah, imagine star, Andre Santos. I feel like if he gets some minutes there, he will do well. Sicho, Man City champions. Haaland will be top scorer. Musa Diaby of Villa. He's already scored. Uh, will be, yeah, he's already off, off the mark. Will be the new, best new signing um, for Aston Villa. 
Burnley will be his surprise club and um, even Ferguson will be a merging star. All right. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I've got your messages. Plus, we're talking about Kudus Mohammed to West Ham United. And also, why is Chelsea spending £800 million and not violating FFP? Because, oh, financial fair play, if you like. Everybody is complaining. Plus, Real Madrid and Barcelona were in action in La Liga as well. And Bayern Munich were humbled in the German Super Cup. All of that still to come here on the show. Just stay with us. Oh, sorry. Welcome back to the show. This is the message here. That completely throws. Anyway. Actually, anyway. So, anyway. anyway. So, <laughs> we are not correct like that. Though. Oh, of course. Because all we want is Kaisedo. All we want is Kaisedo. All we want is Kaisedo. We don't want anything. All we yet. want is Kaisedo. Does Kaisedo come to take them to become. Does it make them. No, you see, I took Kaisedo. I think so. into the. Oh, that's who? There's, there's, to there's, a, there's a transfer just, window league. Yes. Then the premier. Then, then there's the premier. Also, there are winners of those. Yes. And then there's yes proper titles like City. Will win. You see why I like Chelsea. The even Chelsea in their lowest moments, there's pool. Yeah. They have the pool that even Liverpool don't have, and the facts are there. Charlie, I didn't reject Liverpool. Guys, they no need. You know the serious matter. This guy said didn't even save club's number. <laughs> the phone was ringing, it was plus two, three, three something, something, something. Yeah, you didn't say cross number. It's black. It's black. It's black. It's black. It's black. But cross gala number. Oh, I can show it to you. Ah, yeah. But on a more serious note. Yeah, right. It, it, no, it, yeah. it's something. It's something. It says something. Ah, even Enzo Fernandez. Mm. Chelsea were at their lowest. And who, then call you. Who, who would not want to move from Benfica to. Chelsea, maybe a Jai Sarah. No, but, he was a walk up winner. No, but nobody wanted to nobody wanted to sign him. Nobody was chasing him. Nobody was But nobody was chasing Please. him. All right, cool. Let me read some message and there's, there's a lot of them. <laughs> You've only beaten him up to sign this. It's not like shock. You've beaten some <laughs> Madrid and Barcelona. The last nine minutes. When you wanted Rafinha, we saw, the, we saw what happened. When you wanted what? When you wanted Rafinha, we saw what happened. He wasn't picking your Which course? Rafinha? What Barcelona called Rafinha? Rafinha and Which Kunde. one? Which one? And Kunde. Which one? Rafinha and Barcelona. got sent up yesterday. Yes. A lucky escape. Where'd you go? <laughs> Rafinha and Kunde. <laughs> did you see why? What is that to give up? Rafinha and Kunde did the same to you. <laughs> okay, Barcelona take Dewey. <laughs> Wait, you take me to the Yes. Now, now, Kwame says, this yellow card situation are just ridiculous. EPRF should just do better. These situations are crazy. We cannot literally end the match with every player booked. And I'm reading these messages from Twitter. Uh, Nana, uh, or is it na na nyi na nyi? He says, please. At what point do we get to see why Ten Hag chased Anthony throughout the summer's transfer window? Like, what exactly does he bring to this team? Sicho can spend all day. Well, ironically, he had matter. one of his best games in the Man United Colors today, which, did. which was still not good enough. Yeah, interesting. Anthony, yeah. why might have he says uh, Manchester is not looking good at all? There's a lot of work to be done with the team. I'm thinking you're talking about Man United. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Shikomi says, I should minimize my laughter. And he says, Daniel, see your clean shirts, guys. Um, and then, yeah, hindsight, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel Tfue, he says, uh, Fento will waste like 20 minutes on Kaisedo alone. Abba. <laughs> we are on minute 50. We are still on. All we want is Kaisedo. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody. I'm sorry. Tell me. Oh, the song they did pop. Uh, Hassan says, um, why can't I don't know the smile for the unveiling video? Uh, guys should have gone to Liverpool Hosting or maybe Jason. Graham Potter doing some underground work for Chelsea. 
Interesting. Eric, Enzo Houseboy, he says, good evening, guys. I have an important question to ask Liv Loser Paul. How can you go to pay a lady's bride price without proposing to the lady first? Shock. Yeah, that's an interesting one. All right. This one says, my name is Daniel from Teshi. Please, what Situ is saying, I disagree with him because um, we can't say Liverpool lack quality in the final third. It was Chelsea that lacked quality in the final third. Liverpool suffered because of DM. With your quality in the final third, I believe score five. No, no, but I think he, it's the misunderstanding. I'm not talking about quality <laughs> of players. Quality of play on the day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I sign him for Sorry. captain. Capito. Captain Capito. says, with Caicedo in the back and the pending arrival of Lavia, I am the most happiest person on this planet. You should be. And then he ends the message by saying, Captain! Uh, that's interesting. Possible Eric says, the problem currently is thinking we can do business like we used to do before, where club was attracting some good players, but right now it's all about money. We need to stop being stingy and go out and buy some players. Even Arsenal are paying huge. I think one of the other problems is with Klopp is that he is too fixated and too loyal to a lot of the players. Because, uh, in fact, this Henderson and Fabinho and all of these other, they should have gone a couple of seasons back, especially Henderson. But Klopp has always been like that. He's very loyal to the players. Sometimes that turns out to be his, uh, his, uh, his actually his heel. Because in the end, uh, he leaves the players a bit too late to the point where they're no longer performing um, before he tries to replace them. But if he were proactive <coughs> enough, there was a point where in fact, Liverpool were in the front running for, for Vadio, but he didn't want to bring him in. They were actually interested in Enzo Fernandez at some point as well. They could have signed him. Virgil van Dijk has to sit. <laughs> it is true. That's, the, right. that's his position. Let's talk about another player that is in the transfer market, has been linked to, well, pretty much, well, a lot of clubs. At some point, we thought Kudus Mohamed was going to join Brighton. Last week, we had a very, very... In fact, Daniel had a very wonderful presentation here about why Kudus would thrive at Brighton, playing especially in a forward role. Now we are being told that West Ham have taken a lead position in the pursuit of Kudus Mohamed. Okay? As things stand, they said already, Fabrizio says there's already been a positive run of talks between Ajax and West Ham, and they're looking at Kudus as a possible replacement, a replacement for Paqueta. That is briefly. Where do you stand on this? Not, not David Moyes. Don't go to David Moyes. He's, he's anti-whatever Kudus is. Kudus is a, a player who will thrive in a team that plays football, an expansive team, a team that has a manager who has time to help him grow. David Moyes doesn't have the track record for that. You look at even Paqueta at West Ham United, he's not been the Paqueta we knew at Lyon. He's had flashes of brilliance, and that is because of the inconsistency of his role and inconsistency of his, his talents versus how the team plays. It's, there's always going to be a disconnect. You look at uh, Sebastian Halle, who came and didn't do well. You look Skamaka. at Skamaka, who came and didn't do well. There's a way... West Ham United play their football, and it just doesn't suit uh, Kudus' style of play. They will be in the back foot a lot. He will not have a lot to the ball. I think Brighton is the, is the best fit for him. Teacher. Yeah, there's also talks that Kudus sees himself as uh, an attacking midfielder as a number 10, and maybe West Ham offers him that opportunity because there's no Luka Paqueta. If he truly believes that is his role, maybe he's looking at it, and also West Ham, I'm sure, is going to pay him more than Brighton. That should count. But like, I agree with everything Danny says. I don't think... Luka Paqueta wasn't expressive at West Ham because of the Arsenal. And I, I don't think Kudus would necessarily be. Again, at Brighton, I'm not also sure if Kudus walks into the team. Because in the position that he can thrive, they've got plenty of talent. So maybe he's also weighing up playing time. Does he have to go to Brighton and fight for a play? Because Soli March is, 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 is brilliant. No, but they've got Joao Pedro who can play in multiple yeah. positions. They've got Mitoma. They've got, yeah, but, but if you're playing... Yesterday and during preseason, yeah. he's been playing Joao Pedro and Welbeck. Yeah. I don't think Welbeck is his preferred choice. I think no, Kudus... Even Ferguson is his preferred, but even Ferguson had yeah. injury worries. You know, so he's trying to introduce, but there's John yeah. Pedro, there's Ivan Ferguson, there's uh, Welbeck, there's Solly March, you know, there's Mitoma. Yeah. So he's got choices. And Kudus has to... F you cannot walk into the team and say, I'm, no, yeah, I'm Kudus, I'll play. He has to fight. But if he goes to West Ham today, he starts. Because in that role where Paqueta plays... He's only going to compete with maybe Pablo Fornals. Kudu should be doing better than Pablo Fornals, okay. especially if he goes there for 40 million. So maybe he's considered all of them. I just think Brighton would have been a better 
environment. If he goes, then he's willing to fight for his place and and that and, and that deserve. All right, cool. Let's uh, wrap up from in Spain. Show you Real Madrid. They played. They 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 played against Atletico Bilbao yesterday. Inaki Williams and his brother started, but two goals, of course, um, gave them the victory. Rodrigo scored, and then Jude Bellingham scored on his debut to give them a two 0 victory. That's the sort of. Unfortunately for them, of course, uh, Eda Militao also got a. Uh, pulled an ACL injury in that game. So he's also out for the rest of this year, just as Courtois. Speaking of Courtois, though, uh, of <coughs> course, um, he's been replaced now by uh, a setting goalkeeper from, uh, from, from Chelsea. Kepa Ariza Balaha has signed for Real Madrid on a season-long loan deal. He has two years remaining in his Chelsea contract. And... Um, once he comes back from that loan, he will have one year left. Look at Vinicius Juni. <laughs> that team players there. Ideas. That is uh, unbelievable. Uh, we have to see that second goal, uh, of course, from uh, Jude Bellingham on his debut That's for Real Madrid. It. This is it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so calm, man. I mean, he had uh, a great game. He had a yeah, wonderful debut, you know, for Real Madrid. Yeah, I think he's, they know what he signed. He's got real quality. But I just think Carlo Ancelotti's new system is risky. Yeah. That 4 3 1 2, because it's very narrow. So for a team that is very comfortable with playing the ball out of the back, they're going to have a lot of space to bypass the front two. If you're not going to start defending wide. But in some of these games, they can, they can go over. But we'll see how the season if, if ah, evolves. Brother, buy me, Nick. Some way. Oh, they'll win the league. I don't know why you are worried. The win the league. This is not the first yes, time. Yes, but Kane went and the trophy was lying no, there. And not, he took the space this, case there. This is not the first time Bayern Munich is losing the Super Cup. I'm not saying it is. I feel sad for Kane. He didn't send any space. He wants a proper trophy, not a Super Cup. He will win the league. <laughs> oh. And he will win the top scorer. Forget. Ah, all right. Okay. That's our show this evening. Unfortunately, 60 minutes have flown by like they never existed. Thank you so much, all of you, for tuning in, for your messages, for your contributions. This show is proudly sponsored by Syntex Tank, as well as Hunters, a product from Casa Preco Company Limited. My name is Fentu Tahir Fentu. I was here with Sicho and Daniel. Until all next we want Monday, is it's bye-bye for now. All we want is Caicedo. Moises Caicedo. Caicedo. Caicedo.